are sitting on the balcony of, um, of a branch of the Physics Institute of Armenia uh, in the village of Nor Ampert, which is 2,000 meters above sea level. Uh, I'm with Anahit Yeremian, and I have to read this because I won't remember it. You are a particle accelerator physicist at the Stanford Linear Accelerator Center in Stanford, California. Now, for our viewers and for me, can you briefly tell me what uh, exactly does a particle accelerator physicist do? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So first of all, particle accelerators are machines right. that uh, take particles like such as electrons or nuclear nuclei of atoms and they accelerate them to go fast until mm -hmm. they reach the speed of light and then they gain more energy by getting bigger and bigger mm -hmm. and then you can do many different things with them one is to collide them together and make make new particles and study basic physics like big mm -hmm. bang theory and things like that another one uh, some practical applications are medical right. or radiation machines for cancer therapy or industrial machine okay let's go uh, let's go back you were originally born in Armenia right your parents repatriated I think your mother from the United States right. and your father from Lebanon correct in the 40s in the 40s there weren't a lot of people who repatriated from America in the 40s no. to Soviet Armenia were That's there right no there weren't but there were two ships that went two ships that from the US to, took from US uh, the entire ship wasn't full of just Armenians who were going uh, to Armenia they right. went, like stopped in Italy and changed ships right. and so on but there were two uh, sets of people that mm -hmm. went and my mom was actually on the second set Is my that grandparents right? yeah, and yeah. my mom so you were born your parents met here I'm assuming and they met in Armenia in 1953 and married and then I was born in 54 right <coughs> and you also so have a brother and I have a brother who was born in 56 so and then uh, they left in the 60s yeah in 68 we left mm -hmm. uh, actually um, my mom she always wanted to go back to the US right and I guess she came family. against her will in the beginning actually she did yeah. uh, but the family she went with whatever the family sure. wanted to do sure. and their goal was to help Armenia mm. become uh, more independent and to to help it after the war you know to mm -hmm. re uh, recover that was their main goal they were doing quite well in the US when they came yeah uh, but anyway in the 60s when Khrushchev opened the roads a little bit we got per uh, invitation from my grandmother's sister who was still in the US right and it took us eight years to get the permission from the right? government wow. to re return or for my mom to return and the right. rest of us to go with her so you c it's back again forward again yeah back again yeah. it's an interesting exactly. journey your it's family has had yeah, my family my family's had a very interesting journey. I mean, if I start with my grandparents, they've lost things three or four times. In everything their life. From, and started from scratch. Right, you know? right. My grandparents, during the genocide, lost everything and had to start from scratch. Somehow they made their way to USA and to Lebanon, my father's side. Started from scratch there. Mm -hmm. And then from there they came back to Armenia and had to start, start from scratch so again. here. Then in 68, we went from Armenia to the United States, where Soviet government didn't allow us to take the money we had. We were only allowed to take $100 per person. <laughs> so we started life there with $500 mm. with the family of it's, It seems to be a common thread in yeah. most uh, families uh, who are Armenian, yeah. starting yeah. over again. And That's right. uh, so they had to start all over again. Over and now you're back for a number of years now, working at the Cosmic Ray Division right. of the Physics Institute. Right. Um, you didn't need to come here. No. You could have stayed uh, yeah. in the States and done your work and research because from what I read, uh, you design, build and commission particle accelerators in the right. U.S., Japan, Germany, Switzerland and other countries. To, I'll start with answering your very first question, which is what do I do? What right. do particle <laughs> yeah, <laughs> please accelerator that. physicists do? So I design particle accelerators, the machines that I talk about, mm -hmm. talked about earlier. I design these machines and uh, then they are depending on their use, they have different parameters and mm -hmm. so on, and I had designed according to what use they're made for, and then uh, we use them for that purpose. So, um, like you said, I have done designs for Boeing Aerospace Company, mm -hmm. the Stanford Linear Accelerator Center, in Japan, uh, 
called Koenergy Kenkusho, which means high energy research center, and in Daisy in Germany and CERN in um, Geneva. All those travels take me to places where I can go hiking. <laughs> <laughs> I love to climb mountains. Yeah, because you're a very active woman. A uh, biking, travel. hiking. We'll get to the <laughs> yeah, biking we'll part. part. <laughs> so, but I climb. Uh, mountains right and I've climbed many peaks in Europe and in United States right and so um, I thought well I ought to climb the highest peak in our in Armenia which right. is now Aragaz. Aragaz. at the same time my father at, in 1999 he was in his mid 70s mm -hmm. so I wanted to bring him back to Armenia because when he lived here he was the chauffeur of the agriculture minister oh so part of his job was going driving all over the country, the country. during various seasons mm -hmm. to take the minister and so he knew all the areas mm -hmm. and I, I think he wanted to see them all again mm -hmm. so i thought before he cannot do anything anymore i'm going to bring him right so in 1999 i really came for him mm -hmm. not for me and I thought, well, while I'm here, I might as well climb the climb a mountain. peak <laughs> on Aragat. Uh, when we drove up to the end of the road, mm -hmm. to the lake there, Kari Leach, all of a sudden, on the left side, I noticed all these buildings. And mm -hmm. I said to the guide that was going to go with me, uh, what are those, those mm -hmm. buildings? That's interesting. I haven't seen that before. And he said, oh, I don't know, some kind of physics stuff. I yeah. don't know. But the path that we're going to take is to the right. So I asked him, can I please have a tour of that place? He said, well, let's first make it to the summit and back. That's our first goal. And then if we have the opportunity, we will go to the tour. We came down, there was still daylight. So I went there and asked for a tour. It so happened that the director of the place, uh, Professor Asho Chilingarian, he mm -hmm. was there too. So he gave me the, you know, not the 10 cent tour, but the, the grand the, tour. The <laughs> And at that time, I was so impressed, you know, they had all these huge detectors, particle detectors. So my profession, I make particles, man-made machines make particles. Okay. In their profession, particles come from space. Okay. It's a natural accelerator. So in some sense, we have some... So they harness that energy? Is that what they, they're doing? What they do is they uh, detect all these particles that come from space. Right. And from that, they try to decipher which ones have a story to tell about a distant star or a distant galaxy mm -hmm. or our closest star, which is the sun. Right. So there's a lot of background. Mm -hmm. But from in that background, there are particles that have information about our universe mm -hmm. so they study our universe from its natural acceleration of the particles whereas we s we make the particles I and see. see how they just, uh, just to put ourselves in the right position here we're on the slopes of Arakat right. um, at 2000 meters the main branch I guess or one of the branches at uh, the peak near the peak right. of Arakat is at 3200 that's 3200 meters, meters above sea level and unfortunately, we can't see it right now, but right across from us you is... See a little bit we see the, the peak of, the, of Mount Ararat. We see the peak and a little bit of the, uh, of the yeah. slopes there. Yeah. Um, what an interesting place. Okay, yeah. so in 99 you come, you see the, the amazing work they're doing. Yeah. Uh, for most of us living in Armenia, for most yeah. diasporans living abroad, yeah. uh, we understand that Armenia is going through uh, you know, very difficult times. Right. Science uh, is always somehow on the bottom of the list of priorities mm -hmm. for the government. Mm -hmm. um, we've heard recently about um, so many young scientists mm -hmm. leaving the country mm -hmm. uh, because there's nowhere mm -hmm. for them to work or to even mm -hmm. apply their knowledge, mm -hmm. never mind research and development mm -hmm. and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, what is it that you want to see uh, mm -hmm. this, this institute, the Cosmic Ray mm -hmm. Division, the Physics Institute mm -hmm. accomplish? And what is it that you're bringing mm -hmm. to it? So when Professor Chilingarian gave me this tour and w we were talking during the tour, besides the amazing infrastructure that I saw, I also saw things that were so old. Outdated. Computers, computers they still had those floppy disks that we don't even have anymore. <laughs> I forgot what they look like. <laughs> that what they look like. And but yet he was so globally knowledgeable and he knew things that we were doing at Stanford that right. I didn't know about in cosmic ray physics mm. because my f focus is on man-made accelerators. So I thought, wow, these people are doing such amazing things with so little. Right. And so I 
when I came in 99, that was the first time I came, so basically 30 years later. That was the first time after you left Armenia yeah. that you returned. Yeah. All of a sudden, when I saw their enthusiasm, I sort of became a born-again Armenian. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, really? born-again Armenian. So, or the Armenian virus, as we uh, call yeah, it. Maybe yeah. I, I, I don't know, I'd rather call myself born-again Armenian. But, um, so, I was so impressed during that conversation, just spontaneously. I said, you know, I want to help you. Mm -hmm. And his immediate reaction was, I don't need any help, I want to do my science here. Mm. I think he thought, apparently, many people offer to take the scientists out to other countries right. where they can make a very good living. And he thought my offer was to help him get out. <laughs> and his, it was so immediate, his answer. And I said, well, that's exactly what I mean. I'm, I want to help you to be able to do your science here. Mm -hmm. His first request from me was to bring some antennas and I thought, well, you know, I've seen antennas on cars, that's what I was thinking about. Well, it turned out to be these huge, huge things. things. Uh, so, but I came back in November, so I was here in September of 99, and I came back over Thanksgiving weekend uh, in two November. Two months later? About two and a half months later. Right. Yeah. With the antennas? With the antennas, <laughs> but I didn't have anything else, any room to put anything else. I stuffed some personal clothes in the between the, you know, yeah. uh, space. So you actually carried them with yeah, you I to Armenia? Me. At that time, their budget was very poor, very mm. poor. I mean, they were behind in electric payments and all that kind of stuff. They get their funding from the state budget? They get funding from the state budget and they also get funding from international sources. Okay. But because they were so much in debt for their infrastructure, like electric bill, water bill, this bill, that bill, Chilingayan was spending so much time at this ministry, that ministry, begging not to turn off the electricity, not to, you know, this electric company, that. I thought to myself, if I could only provide him the opportunity mm -hmm. to just think about his work rather than keeping the electricity <laughs> on. Absolutely. I wonder what this place could do, given what they're doing now. Mm -hmm. And so when I went back to U.S. in November, after the antenna business, <laughs> yeah. I met my friend Joe Dardigian, and I was talking to people about it, and he's from Boston. Mm -hmm. So he said, well, we, can, we should organize. So mm -hmm. he organized from Boston. I didn't know anything about fundraising or foundations or anything. He helped me a lot. Joe helped me a lot and he's still my partner in this work uh -huh. um, so then we started with very little uh, from our relatives and friends asking. yeah because <laughs> I, I'm going to interrupt you here because your cousin who actually is my godfather we found right. out years later right. um, I remember he was doing some fundraising yeah. for you in, right. Toronto, in Toronto and we're like I had no idea what cosmic ray division yeah. meant. <laughs> I was far, far away from physics and, and the world of science, unfortunately. Yeah. But it's amazing. I mean, that's how you worked. I mean, that's how it started. Utilizing your friends, your family members, right. to try and support. Yeah. Well, that's one nice thing about Armenian families. Yeah. You know, <laughs> our cousins are like our sisters and brothers, sure. and so we all take care of each other. Right. That's exactly right. So with my family and friends, like close people, we raised enough money to c close the electric bill. And if you look at the budget chart, their international funding tripled at the end of that year. Because he didn't have to worry about right. the housekeeping issues exactly. uh, of the institute. Yep. Isn't that a shame? Time that writing yeah. proposals, getting grants. Mm -hmm. And so from there we got all excited and you know, uh, one thing I learned is that you need to be happy with small successes yep. which lead to bigger successes. So with those successes we we were able to convince the diaspora that look if we just gave them this small five thousand dollars or something we closed their electric bill look what happened mm -hmm. to their international budget what happened incredible we continue so diaspora people uh, you know communities they all got enthused about it we now have a database of three thousand people of which probably one-third actually make donations I mean we, we we collect very small donations but but from a lot of people. Yeah. I read somewhere that um, the Cosmic Ray Division uh, consists of about 80 scientists, engineers, technicians, students, and support yeah. personnel. Yeah. So is that's a correct yeah. number? So there's about yeah. 80 uh, of that, it's let's say... 70 and 80, depending yeah. on, you know. 
So basically, about, uh, of this, I'm thinking maybe 30, 40 of them are actual scientists who are doing the research yeah. themselves. It's ab about, I would say, about 30 are. And not only that, from the village, a lot of people are doing technical work, not just housekeeping. Yeah. You know, a lot of village people, in Soviet times, village people were doing technical work. Chilingarian is so fixated on the young people mm -hmm. that this is what pleases me. You know, oh, I'm the fundraiser, I'm the, you know, if I call from the United States, you should drop everything and talk to me, right? Right. But if, if he has a student in his office, he says, can you call back in 10 minutes and have my student here? So, so he's focused on the young. Priority. Right, right. And that pleases me. It p really pleases me. So now, um, every year, there are about 20 to 30 universities, undergraduate students who come here f for lectures, to the Yerevan office, for lectures. Mm -hmm. And then the best of those who show interest go to graduate school in this area of physics, right. cosmic ray physics, of those a few end up in PhD programs. So uh, every year two or three PhDs graduate. We offer employment to all of them as postdocs here mm -hmm. and then some of them move on to become leaders in the group. And so now if you, if you go to a seminar at the cosmic ray division, about 30 to 40 of them are either PhD students or postdocs mm -hmm. or recently promoted young scientists. So that Okay, um, what does this mean for Armenia, having this yeah. kind of an institute? Why is it important that we think about support and try to develop further these kinds of endeavors? Yeah, number one, you know, this organization is one of the top five in the world. This one for here? Re this kind of research. Really? This one here. And it is the best in the world for ground-based research. So people do uh, cosmic ray research from different venues, mm -hmm. including from satellites, including from ships on, on, on in the Ar Arctic Ocean and so on. Mm -hmm. But from ground-based research, Armenia is the best. We have infrastructure that doesn't exist anywhere else. In fact, they are now building some networks in on other mountains in other countries, but they don't have the housekeeping facilities, for example. They have detectors and everything. They control them from below, but if something breaks, they have to drive up to get It's amazing. To it's amazing for me to hear this. Yeah, it's people don't know. I didn't know myself. So, um, but I got to learn as time went on. So for one thing, it gives Armenia a very global presence in terms of excellence mm -hmm. in, in something that's very important. Secondly, as I said, from basic science comes practical things. So they are currently working on two very important practical issues. One is called space weather, okay. which is um, stars are very violent um, entities and our closest star being the sun is uh, whatever happens on the sun affects us the most. During those violent periods, it's always spewing particles and magnetic fields towards whatever direction. During its most violent periods, it's spewing very heavy amounts of this. And if it's happening towards the earth, mm -hmm. then it begins to affect our man-made infrastructure that we depend on so much, like our satellites. I see. Mm -hmm. Your cell phone, your weather satellite, your defense satellites, whatever, your TV satellites. There are so many satellites now. Our lives depend so much on technology. What they do is research to be able to tell in advance that these events are coming towards Earth so that people can take mitigating action. And then this is, I mean, uh, made available globally to... Correct. Uh, it's coming available. from it's coming from here and doing good ground based is a robust way to do it and uh, they're very well known in their field around the world it's incredible and yet when i uh, when we came to the to the yeah. institute <laughs> here and you had warned me yeah i had told you um and and we're, we're certainly used to seeing this in armenia yeah. uh, you know uh, people doing m uh, sometimes i don't even want to use the word miraculous but i mean yeah. fantastic work yeah. under the most difficult circumstances That's and right. conditions yeah. now there's a lot of renovation and yeah. things going on but you walk in and you think, you know, it's uh, you're walking in back into the Soviet Union, yeah, yeah. and yet here you, we are sitting, and you're telling me about all of this um, uh, really progressive and global. Uh, uh, global, bold work that's being done by our scientists. It makes me very proud, actually. <laughs> me too. And, and I'm, I'm terribly pleased that we were able to um, meet, and so you could 
inform me a little or educate me a little bit about this. You know, we heard it, everybody heard about the God particle and CERN in Switzerland. We, we know and people ask me, so what is the God particle? I don't want to talk about it. No, I'm just saying that it's a very technical and scientific thing and to make it accessible to, to people like myself who really don't understand it. Um, I wish you much success and, I, and, I, and I'm sure that um, the leadership and the scientists here at the Physics Institute, the Cosmic Ray Division, are really pleased that you are standing there by their side. And I stand by their side, but if I, I can only do my part if they are doing something with it that's worth it. And obviously they are, and that they you are. keep... And <laughs> Professor Chilingarian is amazing, and the employees are amazing, so it's a synergistic activity, mm -hmm. is what I'm saying. If I just did my part, it wouldn't be enough. Right. Yeah. So it's a group so effort. It's a group effort. And synergistic. And, it, and, it's, and for me, it's also about Armenia diaspora. Yeah. For me, it's bridging. One of the best yeah, it is the best example of bringing your knowledge and expertise and experience and uh, education and you know working with your counterparts in Armenia. That's right. And that's what we should all strive to do. Hopefully, yeah, that's that's my goal. <laughs> we have uh, we have one of the new job new projects that they have started deals with lightning, mm -hmm. and they're the first in the world to measure the energy of the particles that come from a lightning storm. Incredible. And now all of a sudden, NASA is interested in their work and there are conferences here that people come from NASA and all over. I mean, it's just, when you give them just a little bit of opportunity, when they mushroom it and multiply it like this, it makes you happy. Absolutely. Thank you for bringing us here. <laughs> it was a long trip up, I must say, through the mountains, uh, but uh, just the scenery and the air is so clear and beautiful. I wish you much success you. and uh, maybe we'll meet again. Thank you, thank you for giving us this opportunity. Thanks. To be known. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you.